This year, CARICOM has themed Energy Month and RE as in Resilient Community, with energy at the center. In doing so, they have placed emphasis on building resiliency into communities with a heavy focus on the role which energy can play. It is my firm belief, and it is also that of the major shareholders in the sector, that resiliency in the energy sector can serve to liberalize the entire country from the mutually related burdens of environmental degradation from fossil fuel combustion and also the unpredictable price volatility of hydrocarbons. The division of energy in recognizing these challenges has charted a policy direction that will see a virtual elimination of the use of fossil fuels for the generation of domestic electricity in Barbados by the year 2030. This target is the major focal point of the Barbados National Energy Policy 2019 to 2030, and it speaks to a future envisioned for the sector based on the island's experiences with the increasing costs for the importation of fuels. A new Energy Advisory Committee has recently been named and they have begun their work with a mandate of accelerating the delivery of renewable energy licenses on this island. I have made it very clear to them that this is my unswerving expectation. Some of these systems, based on their large size and their varying locations across the island, will considerably augment the quantities necessary for the attainment of our targets. The concomitant advantage to having renewable energy installations located at various points across the island is that it inherently builds in a level of resilience by having power generation distributed island-wide and not being sourced from one centralized location as we do it now. This distributed generation means that in the unfortunate event of an island-wide loss of power from the grid, systems with battery backup can provide electricity and help us relieve some of the stress which we would otherwise face. All Barbadians will soon be able to participate in a series of town hall discussions on a possible community wind proposal. This will see average Barbadians having an opportunity to obtain financial gains from the establishment of community wind installations at proven wind corridor sites across the island. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where technology is now taking us. Imagine for a moment being able to derive monetary benefit and financial gain from the efficient use of wind as a source of energy and power at any given time during the day or night. The wind study and its accompanying town hall meetings is but one in a series of other studies and bodies of research which are currently being undertaken within the division of energy as a transformative menu of options for the energy sector in Barbados. I am proud to say to you that along with onshore wind, the Division of Energy is also seeking to outline a national electric mobility strategy, which will guide the transition of this country's fleet of vehicles, as in all of the vehicles on the roads in Barbados, away from the reliance on fossil fuel and into the realm of renewable energy. This is part of the 2030 ambition. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you happy Energy Month and thank you.